Libertarians Daily Podcast. I got Dale. I'm Hody. We're here. We're going to talk about hitting your goals. And uh, Dale, how are you today, man? Well, um, this is like parallel universe here because it seems like I'm still wearing the same clothes and all of that. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> we don't wash off in here. This is the I'm wrecking, same. I'm wrecking the. I'm breaking the fourth. I'm breaking the. Um, I'm breaking the time stream between the uh, the podcasts. So right, Dale and I'm doing great. Yeah, if you're listening on your podcast feed, this these got recorded at literally the same time, but it's they're going to post on different days. So if Multi, you, multitasking. Yeah. So if you see, yeah, <laughs> right. So if you see that uh, happening on the YouTube, uh, don't go straight to do they ever shower slash do they have other uni- uniforms to wear? Uh, we do. We just don't feel like it right now. Um, all right. I'm actually so, surprisingly fresh and clean today. Oh yeah, you're looking you're looking spicy, but that's got to happen when you're uh, restarting your own yeah. uh, your own business, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about hitting hitting our goals, uh, which is a great conclusion episode of all this because uh, Dale, you got some stuff coming up and yeah. uh, some serious goals to hit. So oh yeah, I'll let you break the news again to everybody. But why don't you tell them uh, and then and then go ahead and bleed that into the subject we're talking about. Taking a break from from Wall Daily. Hopefully, it doesn't get me removed from certain secret groups. Um, but I'm rebooting my painting business. I'm going to be actively taking on more clients other than just the uh, the one that I'm working for. So I'm going to wind up having to um, move some things around and basically work longer um, with one client and then try to go and get get others. Um, I have I I. I have a marketing assistant now. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go into all that details, but going to be helping me out with some of the more data driven stuff that I don't want to deal with. But um, yeah, just going to be trying to grab as, as many clients as I can before the winter or the winter snows. And I guess the, you know, to tie this into the, into the topic, um, this goes back to single mindedness, but the main goal in my case to hit is to be, um, is to be a completely independent business owner, have a portfolio of clients and constant referrals to be able to run and own my own painting company. And so there's several steps to that. And so I guess before I steal all of Hody's thunder, because we don't script this, we don't do anything in advance. We just fly by the seat of our pants around here. Um, first goal for that is to get the marketing straightened out and get the clients and then go from there. So Hody, I will let the blood run onto you and let you continue on uh yeah so uh man hitting goals is something that really made a big impact in my life i learned about this when i was trying to get into restaurant management and i was kind of low level and i read a few books about hitting your goals and er everybody's got like a different uh you'll, you'll read a book and it'll describe some similar concepts but sometimes it's like the five rules of hitting your goals the three rules the 10 rules of hitting your goals but i just wanted to share some of the ones that made the biggest impact in my life and that helped me to get to where i want to be I think the first place, the place I want to start, and I even want to turn this one over to you, mm. is what are your goals? Like, what do you want for your life? That's something that people don't think about an awful lot. I think we are trained automatically. I- I'm a very ambitious person. Mm-hmm. And so I will naturally be like, well, what's the next promotion after this? What's the next step? You know, I went from, uh, man, hosting at Applebee's to managing a ki- kitchen, service management, looked into general management, and man, I hit a point where I said, wait a minute, I stopped liking this job a long time ago, and I don't really like what my superiors actually do. Like, mm. <laughs> I've, I've lost track of what my actual goals are. Because my goal, here's a, ba- here's a great example of a bad goal. Be the boss of whatever company I'm working at. You might think mm. it sounds like a good goal, But really what your goal should be is, this is what makes me happy, so this is what I want. You know, my goal is I want to live in a house that's like this because that makes me happy. Or I want to live, I want to have this car because I like this car. It's okay if they're frivolous. Or, you know, uh, uh, some obvious goals. I want my family to be happy. And what you say is everything else is a means, right? So you got to separate what's a mean and what's a goal. What is medium and what's the result? You know, so so for me, the focus became, well, obviously, my next goal, my goal with this company is to get promoted, is to go up. And then I passed, I mean, 
I think, and a lot of restaurant people will tell you this: the servers make more money than the managers do, right? Um, there's a point where you'll hit like regional something where you make more, but pretty much even the owner of the store doesn't make as much as I do as a good server, right? Mm. And so, my goal was actually to make the most money, but because I didn't get that figured away in my brain, I started getting into that store ownership. And I hated it. And I'm like, man, I'm working 80 hours a week and I make the same as what I did as a server working 40 hours a week. What's going on? You know? And so I, I finally just was like, wait a minute, time out, back up. I'm going to, I need to figure out what I need to do, what I actually like to do first. So I think the first thing is actually having a goal that's a goal. And so I just wanted to turn it. What do you think of that? Um, are you asking me in terms of what my, what my overarching what my overarching goal is with, with no, no, the like reboot what, or just generally speaking. Like what's your thought on like, what's a goal? What's a good goal? What's a bad goal? Like, like what is a goal? A goal is an end state that you wish to achieve. So I would, I would, I would pretty much mimic and parallel everything that you said there. You have to, and not to steal from the, the smart goals, but it has to be, I don't even remember what it is, but basically it has to be measurable. Let me, I should probably have looked that up, but. Oh no, I, I love the smart goals. You're good. So I don't remember the actual smart offhand, but I know you have to have, it's it has to be measurable. Specific, measurable, specific. achievable, relevant, and time bound. Yes. And that's, and that's, that's what you have to do because if you're, if you don't have the time bound, it's just, it's just a, it's just a vague, it's a vague notion. You have to have all of those things in play to be able to do it. And so if you're, you know, in my case, if your end state is to, get free of the it's always been to get free of the uh of the rat race and be able to do do the work that i want to do that is the end goal but now i have to figure out how how soon do i need to have this reboot done how you know how specific is it that sort of thing and so i'm not necessarily going to air that out here but that's what you have to that's what you have to consider in those terms um uh, i guess an overarching goal um, you, one could consider is, and I don't necessarily view happiness as necessarily uh, as we conceive of it as necessarily a good goal because you could be happy playing Fortnite, you know, five nights a week, but you're not going to move your life along anywhere. Uh, I would couch that more in terms of what the Greeks termed eudaimonia, which is more like flourishing. You're you're satisfied. You're uh, you're moving forward with your goals. But I I would agree with you entirely. You have to be specific, measurable. I can't remember the rest of them. I'm so sorry. I am all I am all over the map. I am not doing a very good job here, Hody. I apologize. But I'll turn it back over to you, Matt. You're good. You got a lot going on. The uh, uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Happiness is a bad goal because it's not specific. Mm -hmm. So what you need to say is, yeah, happiness is something. It's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to want. But how do we get happy and break it down that way? So, for example, <clears throat> why do we call them goals? I'm a I'm a sports lover. I love uh, you might notice the Women's World Cup going on right now. Loving it, by the way. Uh, having fun with that. Now, what's a goal in soccer? Well, that's something that helps you win. So your goal can't be just to win. Your goal, a goal happens when you put the ball in the net. How are right. you going to put the ball in the net? The most balls in the net wins. So happiness is like like you said, that's too vague. Right. Break it down. How are we mm -hmm. going to put the ball in the net first? OK, I, happiness, like you said, it, it's too vague. So how do we break down happiness? You know, say, what are the things that make me happy? OK, let's focus on those things first. Right. Let's get right. to work on those things. And so, yeah, I, I, I approve of what you said there. I think I used, you know, a happy family as an example. But, yeah, that's that's not a great goal to have. Um, relevant. I think that's part of the smart goal thing, and that's sometimes an underrated one because yep. people will say, "Well, I, my goal right now is to, you know, get through the day or to live or you know, uh, whatever it may be." It's like, well, that's that's going to happen. You're going to be alive at the end of the day, regardless. You or know, will you? Or will you? The thing is, is if we're breaking down goals, you're going to end up having a lot of them, mm -hmm. and so you need to clear the sheet of some of the ones that aren't actually relevant anymore. Are you doing things in your life that aren't really helping you towards the goal? You might not be doing something that hinders you, 
But you might just say, like, that's probably not the best expenditure of my time. Um, man, I can think of, I know that there's some workout strategies. And for me, my time at the gym, my time is very valuable, right? Right. I, I work a, almost a full-time job in podcasting and then a full-time job, right? So you're looking at about 80 hours a week dedicated to my craft, mm-hmm. you know? And so if I'm at the gym, man, that time has to mean a lot, right? And it has to this be impactful. True. Can I? You can be on a machine that will help me get in better shape, but I can spend an hour on one machine and spend, you know, and, and burn off like 200, 300 calories. Or I can be on another machine for 30 minutes and burn off 500 calories. So what you got to do is, is find what's relevant. You might be right in the sense that something is helping you, but time is a limited commodity. So you have to do what's helping you the most. When we talk about relevant, look, maybe you've got a thousand goals. There's a thousand things you want to accomplish in this life. Let's, let's start with your most relevant goal first yep. and work from there, right? What is most relevant right now? You know, and, and, and break it down from there. I think you just have to prioritize better. Absolutely. Absolutely. In, in the interest of prioritizing, um, yeah, that, that just means that sometimes does mean just getting through the next few minutes or getting through the project that you're on. You do want to make sure that you're present for that. Um, generally speaking, if you're if you're going through and you know, this is this is not intended to be professional advice. We are merely providing information. But typically when you're when you're rebooting or, or starting a, a business, you need to identify your client and you need to get the pieces in play because right now as I'm the artisan and everything else in the company. So I have to sell the jobs and then I get to go do them until I get a crew working under me. So the first in, in this particular case, the first goal is to get booked out maybe a month or, or two months and, and get things to the point where you have more or less a queue of customers where you can start, where you can start charging and working. Um, the the relevance goal may be maybe entirely maybe entirely different for you. But you have to think think in those terms. Um, what's what's going to get you to the next step, Cody? I'll hand it back to you. Oh, okay. Uh, the next step, yeah. The the what's, yeah. These are all great steps, right? A- again, the goal is winning. The you know the overarching goal is winning. Happiness, joy. You know, uh, uh, man, I'm a person of faith, so I think godliness, you know, mm-hmm. is a great overarching goal. But we all know that aspect there's a there's different aspects of godliness. So you just got to break them down a little bit. You talked about it in terms of steps, right? You don't just become Christ like overnight. This is a lifetime of work. This is effort. You know, you just try to do try to model a single aspect of his life and say, I'm going to do a little bit better at that area today. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think people try to overhaul all at once. I'm very much an all or nothing person to say, there's no way I'm going to get there. So no way. I had a friend who took a mission trip to Italy, um, specifically on top of being Christian, I am Mormon. And so one of the tough, tough tenants we have is, is not drinking. Um, it is harder in uh, to, to get that across to people in Europe than it actually is here in the United States. Um, We have some challenges, but man, it's a real tough one. And one of the real challenges they had in Italy specifically was where my friend went. Um, She just was like, man, these people were just said, I believe it. I'm down with all the tenants. I can't stop drinking. There's no way. Mm -hmm. So maybe instead of going cold turkey, it's time to maybe just decrease your dosage. You know, I, I don't want this to be, I, I, I of course love the, you know, I, I am so all or nothing in my life and it's bad because mm. what you need to say, because what you'll do is then you'll just procrastinate. You say, right. these people said, literally, I will put my salvation on hold until I'm in a place in my life where I can stop drinking. And it's like, well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Maybe just be a little better in the following day you know do a little do a little better maybe wean yourself off maybe give yourself even a long-term plan even a 10-year plan or allow yourself with some saying if i fail this goal then here's what else i have to do is make some contingencies 
you know, I, I think, and, and again, I'm not putting my anti-drinking rhetoric off on everybody here. No, yeah, no you are. No, no judgment. This is, speci- <laughs> this is a specific problem to my faith. But you just say, you know, it's funny to see somebody willing to accept everything else, but you're getting hung up on one thing. And to just say, well, I'll go ahead and embrace everything as soon as everything else is in place. Um, liberty community especially has this problem. Well, you know, I'll start acting a little more libertarian when I see these changes happen. You need to work on that yourself. You know, build yourself up better, build your own community better. We're not getting a libertarian society overnight, right? It's or just, it's, it, I wish, right? But it's not happening. Let's and, get, let's go find the gauntlet. Right, Let's go so, find the Infinity Gauntlet. You start the infrastructure, right? To say, like, man, here's one way I can support this business that doesn't have to pay taxes. Maybe it's just one business. Maybe you only have access to one. But start, and then as soon as you start that, you'll find another and another and another, and you'll gradually get there. As opposed to saying, I'm either working in a job where I can live entirely in my house and and live on mushrooms and never see an outside soul again, and, and it's off the grid so I never pay taxes, and it's out in the middle of nowhere and they'll never find me and I'm a total hermit. Maybe start by, <laughs> instead of saying it's either that or I'm just a total statist, living in a status world and doing all the status things I have to do, Maybe just start and say, you know what? I know for me, I know a meat supplier. I love me some meat, steak, stale. I know you are the same. Ribeye. All (laughs) ribeye. Ribeye is the only steak. And he gets more money selling his product when he doesn't have to sell it who he's legally required to sell it to. And so if some of those logs of New York strips, sirloins, or ribeyes happen to go missing, a sirloin I buy by the butt, but if some of them happen yeah, to go missing, butt. it's a sirloin butt. It's what it's called. I'm sorry, but it's <laughs> they're good. They're good. Uh, but he'll sell a butt of sirloin for it. He makes more money and I pay less money than I would at the grocery store. Right. So we have this great little transaction set up. Me and this guy. Now, is everything in my life that devoid of statelessness? No, absolutely not. Right. I pay for my driver's license. I I, I have taxes that I do pay at the end of the year. Um, I, I don't like that I do any of those things, but instead of saying all or nothing, I wouldn't have met that guy if I, if I had an all or nothing attitude, because I say, well, then I have to do this, that, or the other, and I'm just not going to get around to it. Right. It starts with that guy. Then maybe I find somebody who goes cabbage, vegetables, fruits, who sells those on the sly as well. Right. And then I say, okay, but my, but my veggie diseases, Ugh. My, my, my veg syndromes <laughs> yeah uh i know i'm not going to get anybody excited about eating your vegetables on this program but uh but yeah that's how it starts and i just think that so so getting back into hitting your goals make them manageable right make them small you don't have to have an all or nothing i think again bad goal quitting smoking good goal smoke less in one month than i'm smoking today mm-hmm. right and then you break that down and say, that's how I hit it, you know? And maybe you can cold turkey it, but I just, I don't think that that the majority of the problems in your life, in your brain, especially if it's a very real problem, that's taken time. That's festered in your brain. Your brain is used to doing those things. And so it takes a lot of work. Um, there's this great study by the Cato Institute uh, where they, they found that discipline took a lot of energy from you. It's a it's a very measurable thing and you can run out of that energy and when you run out of that de- energy you'll have a lack of discipline. They said basically there's a reason that strip clubs aren't open till dinner time. Because yeah, you could go to the strip club before work, but people don't. Because most of the time you're like, "Oh, I'm not supposed to be going to the strip club. That that's a bad, that's a waste of money. I shouldn't go there." At the end of the day, you're like, "It's not a waste of money. This is what I want to do. It's my money. I've earned it." Their discipline's let down, right? The, the exhaustion is ha- has set in. And so they, they say, well, this is why you tend to find vice late at night versus the wee hours of the morning, you know? And, huh. and this is, um, the, this, the study was fascinating. They did it. And um, the strip club was a, was a brief example. They conducted it with uh, several different things, especially with eating habits. Right. But to just say, man, this is a very, this is a very finite resource. So don't pretend it's infinite. So know yourself and just say, man, I'm, I'm not going to be able to kill Goliath in one day. But, you know, I can throw a few stones at him here and there and break it down until it's finally at a place where I can manage it. You know? Right. Yeah. I you, would add to that. 
I would add that the concept of, of both trajectory and knowing and, and awareness. Trajectory, you want to just make sure that you're, you're plugging away at it, whatever it is that you're doing. The other idea is awareness of when you need to stop um, for the day and, you know, and combating those vices. I mean, the thing you need to do when you're done working is get yourself home and eat your dinner or not if you're doing intermittent fasting. Stay off of your devices, and I'm speaking from experience here. Stay off of your devices, stay away from the computer, and go the flip to sleep. <laughs> you know, get your if you're if you're you know I, I'm just thinking in terms of combating vice, but even just like uh, making sure that you get recharged. Sleep was a huge part of the experiment. You can only really? build energy while you're sleeping, and so this is uh, it's funny because you think you're being flippant when you're saying get some sleep, but no, literally get some sleep. Like if right. you think you are actually uh, your brain, I guess your body physiologically can only build ATP energy while mm -hmm. you're while you're sleeping. So you can't just say it's not going to get better in an hour if you're awake for that hour than it is mm -hmm. at that moment. So if you're saying, well, I'll, I'll I would fail it right now, <laughs> but I'm sure I'll succeed in an hour. Mm -mm, you got to get some no. sleep. Go ahead. Keep going, though. No. And what I was when I wasn't going to I wasn't being flip. I, I said flip instead of fuck. So what I'm going to say is then just go the fuck to sleep. Ooh, bad cuss words. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm such a juvenile when it comes to that. <laughs> sorry, mom, if you're watching or listening. <laughs> it's it's like, Dale, else. we have children in the house. No, I'm fine. Uh, uh, we were such a good family program. But you know what? If you're going out, let's go out hard, right? Let's, uh... <laughs> oh, Chris drops F-bombs all the time on the uh, big oh, show. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, no, the big show? Yeah, that's... Uh... Dude, every show, I have to put explicit next to it. A big one for us was the... Uh, I love the Boss Hog of Liberty. Again, if you're... Uh, that's a that's a subsidiary of the We're Libertarians Network. They're great guys. Uh, Jeremiah Morrill and Dakota Davis are both great guys. Great show. Every show, they will swear at least once. A bad mm -hmm. swear. And I'm just like, oh... I feel like it's like a rap album where, you know, every song next to it says explicit. <laughs> when you scroll down our feed, you know, even on Spotify, I use Spotify and every single one's like explicit, explicit. It's like people are going to look at this and think I'm listening to like some old school DMX or something, you know, what right. I mean? <laughs> like the ghetto boys. And all I do is listen to stuff about people shooting people. And they're like, what? This is a political podcast. How are, how are these so explicit? Because there's so much bad stuff going on. You have to swear about it. <laughs> but, um. I'll get to the I'll get to my my point that I derailed with that with that non with that juvenile nonsense there. Um, just go to sleep. Don't play your video games. Don't stay up any later than you need to. Use the use the thirds equation if you need to. In other words, you spend a third of your life sleeping, you spend a third of your life working, and you spend a third of your life doing the other side of it. Now, if you end up doing two thirds of your life working, get to that other third as fast as you possibly can when you get done working so that way you can re you can regenerate and get after it that's that's where i would say that's where i say would say because the thing of it is when you start making when you when you lose the discipline you start to make the, the, the atp and what what's that an acronym for i'm you said atp oh what's man an hold on for? scientific term i'd have to look it up here atp well the point is when you start to run out of that you start making mistakes. Now I've got, you know, being a tradesman, go ahead. What, what is ATP? Ad adenosine triphosphate. <laughs> I wasn't going to so pull that up. <laughs> so that's basically the gas. That's basically the gas that, that fuels us. Like, that, that helps with discipline. And so it's a molecule specifically. Uh -huh. um, and it's, it stores energy. It's, okay. uh, yeah. So, um, man, what's the best way to say this? So specifically, it stores energy. So you can overeat and say, well, I should have plenty of energy, but I, because what we tend to think of energy are calories, right? Right. And that's true, right? I don't want to misinterpret that, but ATP is what actually like boxes it and sends it to the place that it needs to go in the body. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll run out when you don't sleep, you actually run out of boxing. And so what they say is, well, you know, in this analogy to say like a shipping company is like, well, we have we have a bunch of stuff from Amazon. I have a bunch of addresses and I have no boxes, right? right. So I can't send it there. So it actually, and this is where you actually get into the weight problems a little bit too, is they'll say yes. well, we have energy, but I can't actually send it anywhere. So it's just going to sit here in your gut. 
Sorry, yep. because I, I don't have the energy to do anything with it. Or I'm sorry, I have the energy. I don't have the uh, the capacity to send this anywhere. The shipping container. Yes. Right, to, to burn it up. And and what I'm getting, what I was getting at is, is in being a tradesman, um, I've got, you know, I've got plenty of cuts and, and whatnot. I haven't lost fingers yet. I'm just here. All my fingers are here. But the, the thing of it is, I noticed that as I get tired towards the 12th or the 13th or whatever hour I've been working, even in a short eight hour day, um, I'll start feeling foggy. Um, I, I become, I quote unquote, become stupid. I drop things, um, which is not good. If you're a painter, I typically don't drop wet brushes, but like if you're scraping or something or you, you, you begin to lose coordination. As soon as that starts happening, now, if you can finish your shift, obviously do it. Your do it, whatever your your boss or your uh, your client needs you to do for that day. But as soon as you're able to complete, get to a stopping point, get out of there and get to sleep. I'm just emphasizing that, and I'm partly just trying to rebound that back to myself because <laughs> I, like you, am an ambitious person, and if I don't watch it, I will just go completely bonkers. Maybe wind up unwillingly camping at the job site and have my uh, my client find me in the morning like what are you doing here yeah, you, you why are you sleeping why are you sleeping where you're working and i'm like <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry boss i just wanted to get this done and i just fell asleep i'm so sorry you, you've Real been off quite a bit so you got a lot of chewing to do you know and you want to make sure you got the the time and the energy to chew with exactly. well uh my final thoughts are kind of already already subject. I, I goal being goal oriented has kind of changed my life um, in a really positive way. And I think I was very hesitant to start because and I think any hesitant that you as a li- hesitation that you as a listener might have, I probably had to that if you write it down, you're kind of bound to it. So you have to do it and, and it becomes like homework and it seems like a chore and uh, and you just kind of would rather gradually get to it. But you know, there's no reason they have to be unpleasant or they have to be unfun. Um, you can reward yourself for hitting your goals. Um, I mentioned the soccer thing. Man, winning is fun. So, oh, yeah. you know, it, it, you might say, man, it's a lot of work to score that goal, but there's nothing like the exhilaration of hitting it, right? Uh, it's a lot of work that goes into... I, I, I'm not a good soccer player. I am a good baseball player. And there's a lot of work and working out and effort that I have to do to to really get some power in the bat. You know, uh, for me, I'm a great, usually great contact hitter, but I wanted to add some juice to my game. Took a lot of work. Um, finally started being able to hit the ball out of the park in like middle school ish. And then, uh, you know, was actually like a great slugger when it came high school and college. That's your new nickname, Slugger. Slugger. Immediately. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to do that. Hody's already a nickname, by the way. So I, I don't need another. Uh, the but but here's the thing is it's a it, it took work and it's a great goal to have but you got to break it down into little pieces and it's fun to see the ball go over the fence man it's so rewarding and yeah the the ball going over the fence I mean it only takes you you know twenty seconds to nice give you a nice waddle around the bases you know but that twenty seconds is so worth the four hours at the gym that you put in that week. You know, it's just, you just say, man, it was really worth it. All that studying that you had to do for the pitcher, you know, and say, man, I knew that pitch was coming. I knew what he liked to throw on that count and I got it, you know, and it just feels amazing to say that you got it. And so that feeling is really going to reimburse all that time that you invest in it. So just don't, don't be afraid to make the goals, make them, hit them. It's going to be great. Um, Dale, you should probably get along. I'll, I'll go ahead and do this, the sign off stuff now. Support us, patreon.com slash we are libertarians, we are libertarians.com. Simple advice with Dale Melchin, uh, simplistic advice.com. You're going to want, you're going to want that too with Dale. Uh, he's probably taking a break from all of that, but you should see yes. what he's, you should see what he's got in the archive anyway. But Dale, go ahead and take the longest sign off ever. Oh, I'm not going to take that long of a sign off. If nothing else gets you motivated, just, I've referred to violence of action before. It's not necessarily physically hurting somebody, but it's just, it's psyching yourself up to kick the door in. And even if you, you have to have a shift and think about the thing itself and, and getting past just, I don't know how to describe it. It's very difficult for me to do it, but you just grab the thing itself by the, by the scruff of the neck and wrestle it to the ground. Even if you're doing it badly um, and, and go for it. 
even if it's even if it's the even if the goal in front of you right now is just to survive the day then fine do it you know get through the you know it's it's gonna go by faster even if it seems unpleasant um and you'll feel better about yourself once you get it done so that's my longest sign off in the world there hody johns we are libertarians.com forward slash patreon we are libertarians itunes google play stitcher anything else i miss uh spotify yeah. Yeah, everywhere you want it guys come on come on youtube the uh, we're libertarians.com wherever man we are everywhere yeah. all right well that is that'll be the look to to everyone out there who's listened thank you for putting up with me and my 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 trying to integrate fun and self-improvement hopefully i'll see see everyone again soon but not too soon because i'll be kicking ass um in the in the painting universe i will be on occasionally to report back but uh Thank you all so much for for being a part of this. This has been really fun, and this isn't necessarily going going into the ship and going across the sea to the west, as in the Hobbit. It's just a good journey at this point. So thank you, Hody, and thank you everyone else for for letting me be in on this on this journey towards liberty that we're on. <laughs>